You are a sorcerer, but you probably don't know it. To be a sorcerer, you have to merge with source. Everything comes from source. Everything is source. You are source, and then everything you have in your life is also from source. But yet, look around, maybe even your own life. Many people do without so much because they don't know how to tap into source. Get out of your self-importance. Get out of your ego. Get out of your me, 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 me. Get out of your money. These things blind us from the truth. They blind us from the sorcery. They blind us from connecting with source. And when we get out of these things, that's when we have the encounter. That's when we actually connect with the now. And in that moment, we are divinely connected with Source. You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. I have another episode for you here in the Conversations with a Sorcerer series. This episode is titled, You Are a Sorcerer, But... Now, In the introduction here, what I want to share with you is it's never occurred to me. I don't know why, I guess, because I'm in it and I do the episodes. It never occurred to me to talk to you guys about what a sorcerer is. And I've mentioned it maybe a little bit, but something else I wanted to share is how I met a sorcerer, a shaman, a babalao, a nawal, and how I started working with him. So it's my apology that I haven't shared this before, but I want to share it in this story, in this particular episode, and I want to talk to you about you being a sorcerer as well. So in this episode, I want to talk again about what I just said, but also I want to tell you exactly the sorcerer that I work with, exactly word for word what he told me about how he became a sorcerer and how I could too. So if you'd like to learn that, keep listening. So sorcery and being a sorcerer. Basically, as I'll talk about in this episode, everything comes from source. Everything is source. You are source, meaning you are from source, and that everything you have in your life is also from source. Now, I mentioned in the the introduction, I want to talk to you about being a sorcerer, and you are a sorcerer, but you probably don't know it, because even thinking in that way is so far removed from how any of us, we've been taught to think, we've been led to think. So I want to go over the most recent question that I've been asked, and I talked about, and I opened up with, is how did I meet a sorcerer. You know, how did Don Javier come into my life? Well, I'd asked Don Javier, and actually I asked Don Juan, who is the mentor, the sorcerer that mentored Don Don Javier, my brother-in-law. Don Juan Matus was his name, the elder sorcerer who mentored Don Javier. And I asked him one time, how come me, those of us that are working with him, why, why us? How did this happen? And he said very succinctly, It was written in the stars. And I would say the same thing about you listening to these episodes and you finding me, is we tend to consciously think that, of course we do, we can choose whether or not we want to listen, but I tend to also work from it's all written in in the stars because I'm on my path and then those of you that are here listening are also on your path and our frequencies are intersecting and we're all converging on to this same path of spiritual evolution, spiritual growth, or self-evolution. You've heard me mention a bazillion times, and honestly, I know you guys get, some of you guys get tired of it, and I know because I see your feedback from time to time, and I get frustrated having to say it a lot, but we have many new listeners coming to the episodes. So my brother-in-law, Don Javier, not the one on YouTube, is a shaman, a sorcerer, a babalao, and a nawal. And I'm not even going to go into what all of these are. Take me, this would be a five-hour episode 
but how did I meet a sorcerer? And then I'll get into sorcery, and then I'll get into what he told me about how to, how he became a sorcerer, and how I could become, let's say, a conscious sorcerer as well. Because even when I say, when he told me how he became a sorcerer, wrapped up within that is that we are all sorcerers. My story that I've never, I don't think I've shared it like this on the podcast, is I was adopted. And my adoptive mother told me this when I was in my 20s, when I was 25, which was the agreement she made with my biological mother. They were friends growing up. My biological mother never wanted me to know about her. My adoptive mother said he has a right to know, but I'll wait till he's 25. She told me when I was 25, and she goes, I want to introduce you to your mother. And I said, no, I, I had no interest. I had no desire. And it wasn't any kind of angry thing. Or I just didn't feel like I had a need whatsoever. I just didn't have a desire. I mean, my life was with my adoptive mother. I was very close to her for the most part growing up till I was in my late 20s. We were close. So I didn't really have the need to have an air quote another mother. So she reconnected with her friend, that was my mother, and they talked. And it took me seven years, yes, seven years, for me to agree to meet my adoptive mother. And it was simply a matter of convenience because I was going to be in Dallas, Texas, which is where my biological mother lived. I was there on business and I called her. I'm like, hey, you know, this is your son. And I know you, you and my mom have been talking and I'm in town, let's meet. So we had dinner and I connected with her right away. But at dinner, she said, your brother-in-law is a shaman. And then she explained to me that she goes, your brother-in-law has worked for many decades with another shaman named Don Juan Matus. And I already knew who that was because I had listened to Wayne Dyer years prior and Wayne Dyer talked about Don Juan Matus incessantly. So that night at dinner, I'm like, I want to meet him. I mean, I was just drawn to it. I want to meet him. And that night we went over to meet him after dinner. And just immediately I connected with him in, in seconds. I just connected. It was a very intense, very profound connection. And I met my sister which I had never met prior to that time either, his wife. So I fell into the fold with him, wanting to work with him. I mean, I was like, I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I didn't even know why. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And I'm on that same path today, 28 years later. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I said to him, and excuse the sniffling, please. I'm in Sedona, Arizona, and the allergies here sometimes get the best of me. And in truthfulness, I've never devoted any attention or intention on solving this in my body, meaning the allergies, because normally they go away. So anyway, you might be wondering, well, Jim, you teach people how to heal. How come you haven't healed that? I've never really put any attention on it. And they're so bad today. I'm thinking, OK, you probably want to put some attention on this, Jim. So when I met my brother-in-law, it made sense to me because even... When I was 15 years old, well before the internet, I stumbled onto some writings by the Rosicrucians, which is an ancient society. And I just resonated with it. I was drawn to it. So when I was introduced to Don Javier and told about him, I didn't have any reservations whatsoever. I was just drawn to it. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So his story, I'm going to back up here. He started with a sorcerer named Don Juan Matus in Mexico. Don Javier grew up in Guadalajara, Mexico, and he happened upon a sorcerer named Don Juan Matus. And he started apprenticing with Don Juan when he was a little boy. And I know that we often think, well, you know, little boy, isn't he a kid? Yeah, he was a kid, but that was part of his path. Now, I don't recall if I've asked him his exact age when he met Don Juan, but I think it was around the ages of eight or nine years old. And he spent an intense, an extraordinarily intense decade with Don Juan and numerous other shamans. 
And they really, 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 to the nth degree, put him through evolutionary challenges. Everything from burying him in the desert from the neck down and then leaving him. Taking him to the desert and then working with him a, a different point for every day from sundown till sun up for seven weeks total. Just as two examples, I mean, they really put him through an intense evolutionary process. And he told me when, I believe he said he was 19, Don Juan said, you need to go into the world and be your own man now. And I wouldn't say that he left the spiritual path and left being a shaman, but he went out into the business world and did very, very, very well as a businessman extremely well and actually better than most people. And I do want to point out because you could be thinking, well, he's a shaman, so he can see things. And it's interesting to a lot of people, and it was to me when I heard this, he's not allowed to use his abilities to see for his own personal gain. There are many times that he's needed to do something in the 3D world, like finding a home or whatever it might be. And those of us that work with him had to do the legwork because he's like, I can't see when it comes to me. I can see when it comes to you, meaning I can see, I can remote view, I can ask for guidance, but I can't ask for me. So he did very well of his own volition, of his own application, of his own intention. And when he was right around 40, he was guided to, he had to give everything up. And he did. He gave everything up, every penny he had. He had so little money that literally he and my sister had to call my mom for money for bus fare. Now, mind you, just backtrack a year prior, a month prior, he was doing extremely well financially, very well financially. He's a very shrewd businessman. He, he manages things well including himself spiritually, but including business as well. He and my sister had to call my mom for money for bus fare because they had no money. And that's when he was put back on the path again, or drawn back, not put back, but drawn back to the path again of working as a shaman, working as a healer, and serving people. In this day and age, he works with people that want to grow spiritually, or people that come to him for healing. And I do want to point out, and by the way, I'm going to make this all worth your while. I'm just giving you some background here because I'm going to tell you how he told me how he, air quote, became a sorcerer, even though we are all from source. But speaking for me, people, people have said, Jim, are you a shaman? No, I'm not a shaman. And if you actually knew what a shaman was, you'd look at me and go, that dude is not even close to being a shaman. I don't know how many lifetimes I've got left to practice this, but I'm not there right now. Just like you, just like every single one of you listening to these episodes, I have my lessons. I have my learnings. I have my ups. I have my downs. And I even did an episode recently on learning your lessons. I am not immune. My sister who apprentices with him is not immune, and he's always learning as well. Don Javier, he's always learning from the beings that guide him, and every day is a day to learn. So I'm learning my lessons, and I'll just leave it at that for now, is I'm no better, no worse. I'm on the path, and my path is apparently, as I look back at the past five years, is to bring a lot of this to you guys. Now about shamanism, when I say I'm on the path, a lot of people have said, Jim, you're really lucky to have a shaman guiding you. It's a very challenging path. I remember when we were doing ceremony, I believe in Chichen Itza one time, and I'll talk about that in a moment. We used to do ceremony in the spring equinox at a power spot, a power vortex on the planet. And I was reading a box of something that was over the counter, a pharmaceutical something, but over the counter. And it said, causes headaches, causes dizziness, may cause faintness, may cause lack of energy, something along those lines. You know, the things you read on the labels in the back of a package. And as I read it out loud, 
Don Javier was in the room, and I said, you know, it can cause dizziness, dizziness, it can cause faintness and weakness. And then I, I commented with what I commented with, well, sounds like shamanism to me, because it is a hard path physically. And even now, with all the solar activity on the planet, I'm going to be very candid. Right now, I'm sitting here talking to you, and I'm doing my best not to fall out on my chair. It's a very challenging, energetic day to day. So I'm not going to say paid a heavy price, but I've invested a heavy price, and I've given up a lot to be on this path, but I've also gained a lot. And Don Juan once said to me, and those that work of Don Javier, his exact phrase was, is that a sober man has to be tricked to be on this path. And he said, any sane person would say hell no to this path. So many people, as I said, have asked how, they've asked me, Jim, how do I meet a shaman? Because they've asked about Don Javier and his waiting list right now is 800 people as of October of 2024. He closed down his waiting list for all people that need healing and want to grow spiritually. And he's trying to work through the waiting list and he has to, to do it one by one. Just a cautionary, cautionary comment. Is there a lot of people online that will say they are shamans? They are not shamans. They are people that may practice shamanism or explore shamanism or whatever. But in my experience, I've never seen a single person online that calls himself a shaman. And I can actually, I can see who they are. I can see their energy. They're not shamans. I've had people say, oh, I'm a shaman. And they talk about how broke they are all the time. Well, shamans know how to source. They know how to manifest, which this episode is about sorcery, which again, we'll get to in just a moment. So a little cautionary comment. If someone is trying to charge you a lot of money for healing or spiritual growth, meaning that's what it's for, they are not a shaman. And I don't think there's really anything wrong with people charging for that. Just don't let them tell you they're a shaman. A shaman gets everything, all their guidance, all their wisdom, everything from a source. And a shaman can't sell you what doesn't belong to them and source does not belong to them because we can all, once we get out of our own way, and for many of us, we just don't have the ability, the clarity and the guidance to do that, we can all connect with source. So Don Javier does not charge for spiritual work. I know people that have worked with him for a decade and never given him a penny and he will not ask for money. He's not allowed to. And I think I've alluded to that before in other episodes when I didn't even know he didn't have money and he never asked me for money, and I had money. Six figures and working a corporate job, et cetera. I didn't know that he didn't have money, and he never let on to that. Don Javier does charge, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks for an initial consultation. He's allowed to charge for his time, that one time only, and after that, he's never allowed to charge again. All right, so let me get into a little bit about sorcery here in just a moment. But the path that I'm on, we have been inside, as I mentioned before, my family has been inside Cheops, the Great Pyramid, for two nights. Deote Wiyakan for two nights. Chaco Canyon, Uluru, Machu Picchu, twice. Isla de Sol, Haleakala, Chichen Itza, Palenque, and more. And these are all sacred power places on the planet. They're all sacred vortexes. So the path that I'm on is a non-ordinary reality. And I attempt to bring as much to you listening to the podcast as I can from this non-ordinary reality so that you can also grow and evolve your life. All right, let's talk for a few minutes about sorcery. The universe is source and everything comes from the universe. Many decades ago, I asked Don Javier when I was just a neophyte and I was green, I'm like, where do you get all your, all your knowing from? And he very just nonchalantly said, from where everything comes from, from source. So everything is source, your entire life, your breath, your brain, your thoughts, every single thing in your life is source and is from source. Everything about you. As I said, even your breath, everything comes from source. But yet, look around, maybe even your own life. 
many people do without so much because they don't know how to tap into source, which is what I'll tell you in just a moment. So to be a sorcerer, let's say a conscious sorcerer, you have to merge with source. What we do is we separate ourselves by society and what we've learned and all these things we've learned about our abilities and about ourselves separate us from source, which is the power that comes through us, the life force. Remember that word force. I'll mention it again in just a moment. That word force. So everything comes from force and we have to merge with source and force. I want to go back to 2021. Don Javier and I, I pick up the phone and call him anytime I need something. I do my best to mitigate when I do call him. I know that he's very taxed and very busy and the energy is very intense on the planet. But we text a lot and we'll communicate things. And he sent something to me in 2001, 2021, sorry. I want to read it to you. I'm going to read it verbatim and then I'm going to come back and take it apart for you. And he told me, this is how I became a shaman. Remember, shamans go to source. So I'm going to read you verbatim what he texted me in 2021. And then again, I'll come back and take it apart. To know ourself, we have to be one with ourself. We have to be one with everything. With Anima Mundi, Pachamama. With all that is, and that is now. Being present with all of our relatives, and that changes everything. That changes you, and that is a real encounter with the all. This is where I live and breathe, experiencing everything that is out of the brain and 3D and molding into what we come to be. That, Jimmy, is shamanism. Religion is organized. Shamanism is not. And I'm paraphrasing here because English is his second language. But the last part was, when we can be present with everything that is, that is when you will have the biggest encounter. And he signed it, love you. And as I mentioned, that's how he became a shaman. Let me take that apart, okay? And a sorcerer. Anima Mundi, what is that? I wanna read you the definition of Anima Mundi. Anima Mundi is a Latin phrase that means world soul or soul of the world. It refers to the idea that the world is animated by a vital force, there's that word, or principle that connects all living beings. The concept is rooted in ancient Greek and Roman philosophy and has influenced many many systems of thought, including Stoicism, Gnosticism, Neoplatonism, and Hermeticism. Now, to this article, I think I get this on Wikipedia, is the concept is not rooted in Greek and Roman philosophy. It's rooted in source. I mean, it's just the philosophy trying to make meaning of the source. So force principle, remember that word force principle, anima mundi. Force principle is source. And another definition of anima mundi is There's an intrinsic connection between all living beings, suggesting that the world is animated by a soul much like a human body. Okay, so I want to take apart, and I'm going to keep this really simple, okay? I'm going to take apart what he said, what he texted me. I'm going to take it apart line by line and give you my interpretation, and I'm going to do my best to give you the purest interpretation, knowing him and knowing what he meant and knowing what he said over the years. To know ourself, we have to be one with ourself. That's what his first comment. 
So what he's saying is you have to understand the nature of you. Ponder that. You are not, you are not your body. You are not your 3D reality. As I've talked about before, your body carries you. You are the divine essence and the divine energy of you, and your body carries that divine energy like a transportation mechanism, like a car. His next comment, we have to be one with everything, with anima mundi, with Pachamama. Pachamama, by the way, is the native term for Mother Earth. So his comment there, what he's really saying, you, Bob or Susan or Mary or Jane or whatever your name is, you are an individualized body and being, but you are also a reflection of the all. You come from and you are an individualized reflection of source. So question, how do you, when he talks about being one, how do you treat people, things, animals, resources? What care, what love, what giving do you have for all things? Or are you too busy with your individualized identity of Bob or Sue or Mary or whoever it is, whatever your name is, that is a very important point is we have to be one with everything. And I'm sure many philosophies you've heard before that we're all part of the one. And then he goes on with all that is and that is now. Now is all that is is. I sound a little bit like Bill Clinton back from the 90s. It depends on what the definition of is is, is what Bill Clinton said back in a deposition back then. My commentary is now is all that is. There is no future. There is no past. Now is all that is. But many of us live so much in what we think the future is going to be or the past was, we're not living in the present, and that's all that there is, which means we're not living in all that there is. His next line, being present with all of our relatives, and that changes everything. Relatives. Basically, what he means is all the other beings on the planet. Everything on the planet. The air the water, the animals. Oh yeah, other human beings. But being present with all of our relatives. So a question for you, how present are you? How connected, how grateful are you with all of your relatives on the planet? How do you treat animals? How do you treat other people? However you answer that will answer how present you are with your relatives on the planet. His next line, that changes you, and that is the encounter with all. So he meant being present with all. Basically, when we are present with all and everything, that's the sweet spot to becoming the sorcerer, the shaman. That changes us because we connect, we recognize, and that's like a major, like a reborn, being reborn epiphany. We become present with every single thing, including the divinity of ourself. And he said, this is where I live and breathe. I'm going to comment. I've observed that for 28 years, experiencing everything that is. I've noticed that. He savors life. And that's a good way to put it. He savors life. I watch him eat a glass of wine, a sip. He savors a conversation. He savors a moment. He savors a sunset. He savors. His life is about saving, um, savoring things. And I remember one time we've traveled all over the world 
and I've never seen him take a single picture, not one time, not exaggerating, not one time. And if I recall correctly, I said, Don, how come you don't take a picture of anything? I mean, we're here in, in the Andes Mountains and we're in Chaco Canyon and we're at Teo Teo. Now in ceremonies, trust me, he does not have a camera in ceremony, but we'll generally stay in these places for two weeks, Uluru, in different places. When we go, when we go on journeys, we'd be there for two weeks, but do two ceremonies, two nights. But I never saw him take a picture, ever. And I remember him saying something like, I absorb the experience, meaning he savors. I absorb it when I'm there. Why do I need a picture? And then he said, out of our brain in 3D and molding into who we become. Out of our brain, most of us think we are our brain. Our brain is our mind. Our brain is not our mind. Your brain is simply a medium for the mind. You're actually, your mind also exists outside of your brain. And to demonstrate that, look at people that have had near-death experiences. They are literally clinically brain dead, but yet they can tell you everything that happened because they're observing it with mind. That's a whole nother very, very long series that I can do for you guys at some point. I haven't wanted to take that on yet, but when I had the stroke and heart failure in 2020, I asked him how to operate outside of the body. And I can share that at some point, but again, that's probably gonna be a four to six part series. Then he said, that Jimmy, he calls me Jimmy because I'm family, is shamanism. Religion is organized, shamanism is not. When we can be present with everything, that is when you will have the biggest encounter. Love you. So your takeaway there is, I'm gonna simplify this. Get out of your shit, like I've talked about. Get out of your self-importance. Get out of your ego. Get out of your me, 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 me. Get out of your money. Get out of your, I have to be important in the world. I've got to be seen in the world. All these kinds of things, these things that we as humans get into, and they're done that, these things blind us from the truth. They blind us from the sorcery. They blind us from connecting with source. And when we get out of these things, that's when we have the encounter. And that's what he said. That is when you will have the biggest encounter. An encounter is an experience with, with something. And experiences change us. You think about experiences you've had on the planet, different things, car accident, a wedding, this, that, a meeting somebody. The experience can change you. So when we encounter, when we have an encounter with the now and we get out of all these self-importance important things that we wrap ourselves into, that's when we have the encounter. That's when we actually connect with the now. And in that moment, we are divinely connected with source. Normally, I'd break transformational takeaway. Normally, I'd break all this down for you and try to make it all make sense for you guys. But you know what? My sense tells me not to do that in this episode. You've listened, you've heard my voice, you've heard the frequency, assimilate it in any way that you want. You can ignore it, you can go back and listen to that paragraph that I read verbatim that he said to me earlier in the episode. It's entirely up to you. But working with him, he never, ever breaks anything down like I do for you guys in the podcast. He simply tells me, and it's my job to break it down but I'm here to serve you guys and I'm at his side. So I have, you know, obviously 28 years with him. I have the capacity to break it down for you guys and that's what I do. So just sit with it and assimilate. Favor, please. If you're enjoying these episodes and the fact that you're listening must mean that you do, please share the podcast with people that you know. The more you share it, the more we can help other people and create a better experience of ourselves by sharing and bringing more into our life and helping other people. If you would as well, please also leave me a five-star review. Anything less than that will not serve me very well and it's not gonna help me reach more people so that we can all grow and evolve together. So please leave a five-star review if you would. And I know it's easy to say, oh, okay, Jim, I'll do it later. But you know what? I've talked about before, later never comes. So if you do that right, right after this episode, I'd be very, very grateful for that. 
And remember, I'm asking you this as a favor to me because I'm bringing value to you. I need A-Y-N-I. What we do for others is done for us. So please do it for me and you'll help me, but we'll also together, you and I together, will help more people. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you over on another episode. Bye-bye.